In this video, I'm going to show you how it's actually possible to run a very successful match defense against a compressed set in Madden 22. Now, if you are new to the channel, I want to encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I upload new videos every single day that can help you become a better Madden player. I also want to let you know that we are today talking about the nickel 335 will in the Chicago Bears defensive playbook. If you would like to get access to my full uh, 335 will defensive guide, I'm going to put a link to that in the description of this video you can get the entire defensive system for just 15 bucks now guys whenever we're defending tight slots or tight offset or some of those formations like that to be honest with you i personally absolutely hate defending them the reason why is because they have so many random routes that you just don't see from other formations you have wheel routes from all over the place you have motion slants you get um double crossers um there's just so much to it and um it's just difficult to defend with match coverage because with trips or bunch or even doubles for that matter the the match concepts make more sense because it's less confusing but when you start defending a match against tight a lot of times the match players will actually get confused and it's really honestly difficult because you're having to kind of think through what your rules are against compression. So uh, in this video, I wanted to do a breakdown on how I like to run match coverage against gun tight. And we're actually going to utilize, you could use cover four palms or cover four quarters. They're both very, very effective uh, against this formation. Uh, in this video, we're actually going to break down nickel 335 wheel cover four quarters against compression. And it's really actually a lot more simple than you might think for defending this. So first, I want to kind of diagnose a little bit of the problem with the match coverages. Uh, you see here, I'm in a base quarters. And let me just give you a real simple example of something that your opponent can do. Something like this concept right here. We have a double wheels and a, and a running back streak. What you're going to see here is a lot of times that tight end is going to get wide open against the match. You really can't use her both sides of the field. That's what makes tight so hard is you've got double wheel routes, but then you could get things like, for example, this flood concept where we have this you know huge nuke of a post route, and then you got a running back wheel that you got to worry about. So there's just a lot to guarding this. And uh, we're going to show you how I personally like to guard it uh, right now. So what we're going to do um, is we are going to pinch our defense. We're going to crash our defensive line out. We're going to shade our coverage down. Why we like to do that is because it's going to put hard flats on both sides. Whenever you are defending gun tight, the most popular concept that you are going to see consistently is mesh two drags or a running back in and a drag or a motion slant and a drag you're going to see these crossers that's what tight is so good at, at, at doing uh, and that's really where match coverage struggles is in these shallow crossing type of of uh, things that you can do from gun tight the next thing that we're going to do once we shade our coverage down is we're going to take this guy right here and we're going to man him up the three red hook defender onto the tight end that's going to take away a lot of different things in this formation. It's going to take away tight end wheel routes. It's going to take away a ton of stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this safety over the center. We're not important. We're not going to put him on a blitz we're going to just let him be his his guy because if they motion we're going to have just one simple adjustment i'm going to talk about that a little bit later and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take the linebacker or the defensive end that is on this left side of the screen here and we are going to put him in a bluff blitz now that's my favorite adjustment in this whole tutorial because you see here it gets our, our three red hook defender what most people like to do especially uh, anyone that runs this uh, a lot will have a setup that looks kind of like this Basically, we're going to take uh, Evans, we're going to put him on a flat, we're going to motion him to the outside, and then we're going to have this seam wheel uh, that is very much so open. A lot of times they might pair this with a, you know, a deep post, maybe a streak on the backside, so it might look something like this. And what you're going to see here is this three-wreck hook uh, defender is going to absolutely bag that running back route. That's my favorite adjustment because really they can't, they can't utilize their running back if you use that adjustment. And so we still have a three-man 
three-man down, uh, three-man uh, pass rush, which is good, uh, which is why we don't need to blitz our users. So um, the other reason why I love, love, love this defense is because another thing that you're going to see from time to time is traditional flooding concepts are not going to work. So you're going to see here, I'm going to audible over uh, to this bench play, and I'm going to put the running back on a little out. I'm going to put... Um, you know, basically something like this right here. Very, very good concept, right? But what you're going to notice about this concept is we're getting a box check, from, a box check on both sides of the field. Now, your user, let me just kind of clarify what your responsibility really is. I want you to open over to this sideline for any kind of wheel route or flood over here. And then if they bring someone across your face, like a deep crosser, you're gonna take that vertically, okay? That's kind of your responsibility. This allows, and that's why we man up the tight end, because we don't have to worry about the tight end. Whatever he goes on, he's manned up. We're gonna be okay. Uh, and then you're gonna see here, against the any kind of flood concept, either side, not, they're not gonna be able to hit corner routes on us. So really the only thing that they can consistently hit in this offense is a deep crossing route. And so that's where we're gonna talk about uh, this next play that I like to talk about. This is the post wheel. Um, this is, I know that goes Madden, one of the best players, I think he's Madden 18 uh, club champion. I played him last year in the, uh, I can't remember what tournament, oh, the Madden Classic, and he absolutely beat the crap out of me. Um, he wasn't running this, he was actually running something else, but this year he's famous for running this formation, and he runs it really, really well. He's got a, taken a, a lot of really deep runs in tournaments with this. And so, uh, anyways, the reason I'm bringing that up is this is one of his favorite plays, and he runs um, this out of the... Uh, he runs this out of the Bengals playbook because of this play right here, post wheel drag. Now, uh, what we're going to do in this example, you're going to see here, we're just going to kind of set it up like this. Uh, this is a great little setup right here. You've got mesh on that side, and then you've got, obviously, the, the deep wheel. Uh, what's interesting about the quarters coverage is you're going to notice here why I like quarters so much is you're going to see how it defends these wheel routes. So at the snap of the ball, I'm coming over here. Oh, I'm going to open up. Okay, now I've got to deal with that crosser. But as you can see, everything thing else is completely bagged across the formation now the real hallmark of trip side in or not trip side in but uh tight is something that joel cp uh likes to run a lot of and that is this flood play he doesn't use it from this uh, formation but it's the same concept essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do double crossers with that deep post and then we've got these meshing concepts underneath of this so uh, i want to show this as well and again it's the exact same setup defensively nothing changes for us it's just our primary responsibility is if we see a crosser coming from left to right we need to take it so you're going to see right here at the snap of the ball i got the meshing concept there's the double crossers and as you can see we're able to defend the majority of what people are doing uh, within this. Now, we actually ran into each other on that play, so let me try to run that back uh, and break that down. This is why I think tight is so tough, uh, because one little mistake and you run into each other or something happens and uh, you just find yourself in a real big, you know, just a big challenge. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to go to the play Flood, double crossers, drag the tight end, drag the running back, and now, again, want to watch how this kind of plays out. Uh, and what you're going to see here, we're opening here. We see that crosser. We're going to go to that. In that example, you see that the circle receiver is actually the player that we need to go with. Um, but the bottom line is you see how we're able to defend the majority of what they're trying to accomplish. Now, uh, again, another little trick of the trade, um, if you wanted to do this, is you could simply go ahead. You hard flat, of course. Um, and then what you do on this backside is, you go ahead and know, okay, my user, if I get that double crosser type of look here, I know that I'm going to kind of continue to carry that. But let me show you another example real quick. This is mesh spot. So you see I've got a vertical. I've got, you know, some really good, kind of the same concept really. Uh, but if you take a look at this play, um, because it's a, a little bit more of a vertical stem, you see how he's going to take that post all the way across. So depending on the formation, it is a little bit different if it's tight slots or if it's tight... Um, Oh, gosh, what's that formation Rams? Uh, I don't know. That's the compression formation in the Rams book. Um, anyways, the bottom line is you've got to deal with kind of both of those. And so formation to formation, it might be a little bit different, but you're going to be able to catch up to it because when, when you're in the middle of the game, you're just saying, okay, um, for example, so like if I go post-wheel uh, post drag and then I post – 
uh, or I, I cross her, the backside guy. And then as you can see here, I've got some kind of like vertical route to Godwin. Now, you know, it's a little, again, it's just a little bit more of a, uh, of a deal, but you're opening here. You see, oh, he's, see, how, see that right there? See that flip off? So that's what you've got to kind of look for. And to be honest, you know, really, if you think about it, because circle, um, because you have the tight end manned up, if circle comes on a crossing route from deep, from, from the right side to the left side, it's a little bit more natural for you to use that anyway. Uh, so again, one more thing that I want to showcase on this. Um, if you wanted to, you could use her this guy. Um, you could you you could use either one of these inside quarters uh, is typically who I like to use her on this. Um, the reason I like this is because I've got that tight end manned up right. That crosser on the right side for the most part, as long as he's if he's on a crosser, it's a little bit different than if he's on a post. So you'll see again, like right in this example, this is a great example of what I'm talking about. Um, you know, they might even motion Godwin to the left. Well, that changes everything. If they motion him to the right, then now what we want to do is we say, oh, well, we're going to get off of this guy and we're going to get back onto this guy. Very simple little adjustment, but you'll notice how much this changes because you'll see when they go to trips, now it's 100% you've got to take that crosser from the weak or strong side to the weak side. It's generally like that anyway. Uh, strong side to weak side crosser um, it's just you know the other thing you could do out of this if you wanted it to be a little bit more uh, kind of explanatory uh, you could just man up circle and and then man up the tight end so you see it looks like this now you've got the bot you know now you have that matching uh, back side now any crosser from uh, from that side coming across uh, is now your responsibility so let me show you kind of what I'm talking about so you get something like this Notice that the if you shade inside, for the most part, that that crosser will get taken, and then you're just coming over here and kind of closing off on it. But I'll tell you right now, this is a pretty decent uh, compression defense. You just have to pay attention a little bit uh, to that right of screen player. Um, typically, from my experience, okay, typically from my experience, they're gonna have to hot route that crossing route. If you see circle on a crossing route, important distinction. So that what that you're going to see here is it's a very clear uh, crossing route from the beginning because why he takes this inside step. See how he takes that inside step right there? At that point, I know i got to go to that crosser, okay? If he goes directly straight, that means he's either on a corner, a streak, or a post. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in that regard. We're going to go to mesh spot. Um, and then you're gonna get you know this look basically um, like so and what you're gonna see now is shade yard coverage down we've got the, the the man assignment on the tight end and then we've got the three rag hook on that defensive end now if you watch here I open up oh, he's going vertical so now I need to take this and as you see the entire the entire rest of that concept is bag so it really is kind of one of those things you have to pay attention a little bit with your user to know which crosser to take uh, but for the most part if you if you can handle um, this this concept that I'm breaking down right now everything else from this formation is going to be very difficult to run um, the four verticals concept really doesn't work um, let me show you real quick another play that people like to use out of this this is a bomb out of the flood this is great defense for this this uh, this bomb play this is a play that uh, a lot of people like to use right now uh, in head-to-head -head. Uh, out of the Carolina playbook you could do it out of a lot of playbooks but let's say for example you get a look like this and then you know you get this wheel right this is a very popular bomb and what you're gonna see here is oh he's on a vertical so now I turn my attention here and as you can see I bought I don't even have to help on that and it completely bags that bomb so this is my favorite way to defend compression. Um, you really have to just kind of focus in on a couple things. The, cro the double crossers, what your assignment is, if, if that happens. And then also, if the running back is going to go on seam wheels and stuff, using that three rec from the defensive end pos position is really going to help a lot in that. And then if they motion, you need to make sure you're using the weak side quarter defender against tight. So in this example, the weak side is to the right, but if they motion anybody from the left to right, then I need to switch sides with my defender and take that accordingly. I want to thank you for watching this video. It's a little bit more of an in-depth breakdown. Um, if this does not even scratch the surface of what is in our Patreon membership, if you've not joined the Patreon membership, you're going to get immediate access uh, to 
12 offensive and defensive ebooks as soon as you join. You're also going to get access to any ebooks that I release while your subscription is active. It's only 10 bucks a month to sign up for the Patreon, so you can do that right now. If you guys are interested, you want to take your Madden game to the next level, head down to the description, click that link to join the Patreon, and again, it's 10 bucks a month. You can cancel whenever you'd like, so it's not like a year-long subscription. It's month to month, and, uh, and again, you can cancel that whenever you'd like, but if you want to join the Patreon, head on down to the description, click that link, and I guarantee you, you're going to find a ton more in-depth tutorials uh, than what you just saw, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.